Good afternoon. Welcome to Encoder Products live demonstration at PAC Expo 2020 virtual. My name is Jared Stearns. I'll be your host this morning, along with Steve Diltz, who you can see in the audience there, and he'll be available to answer any questions you may have if you type into the chat box. Today we're going to discuss Absolute Encoder. So this is our third installment for the, the PAC Expo week, and we're going to focus on Absolute Encoder. So a little review from before. What is an encoder? Well, encoders, rotary encoders to be precise, are devices that allow you to measure speed or distance, velocity, and they do that by creating pulses. There are two flavors of encoders, incremental encoders and absolute, like we're gonna get to. We're gonna talk for incremental here, encoders here for a second, just to go over how they work. They're pretty simple. They create pulses. Imagine when you were a kid, you put a playing card in the spoke of your tires on your bike, and you drove around the street, Annoying everybody with that noise? Well, every spoke that hit that card made a noise. And that's exactly what these do. There's lines on a disc, and there's a light shining through those lines. And as you rotate the wheel, as you rotate the shaft here or through bore encoder, you create pulses. If you have a thousand lines on that disc, like a thousand spokes on a tire, you would create a thousand pulses per revolution. That's what incremental encoders are. They're not very smart. They just create pulses, and you count them. If I were to turn this, and you weren't paying attention and you didn't hear them, you miss them. It doesn't tell you where it is, just creates pulses. An absolute encoder is different. Absolute encoders actually tell you where they are. They give you a discrete position. So for example, I have a watch here, and if I removed all the numbers, it'd be an incremental encoder. If I just listened to the ticking, tick, 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 and counted those ticks, I could tell you how many seconds went by. Better not miss one. An absolute encoder is a lot like putting the numbers on the face of the watch. It gives you a discrete position. I can look at my watch and say it's 11.20, 11.31 now. And then I can wait five minutes and I can look back at my watch and say it's 11.36. I didn't have to actually watch and listen for the ticks. That's what an absolute encoder does. It gives you a discrete position whenever you query it. So why would you need an absolute encoder? Well, there's some very important reasons why, depending on your application, you may choose to go with absolute feedback, you'll hear it often called, versus incremental feedback. One of them is maybe you have a, a situation, an application where there's safety involved. You can't afford to lose position. You can't afford, if there's noise in the environment, if there's a sudden loss of power, you can't afford to have motion that isn't controlled or that if you turn the system back on, you don't know where you are anymore. Some systems, that doesn't matter. Safety is not an issue. And they say, think of a CNC machine and you have a power loss. What's the first thing you do? You hit the zero button. Send everything home. So, hey, send it back. Send it home. We're going to hit a limit switch. We're going to set zero. That works great with an incremental encoder. Well, what happens if I have a 40-foot gantry crane and I've got an encoder on that and you have a power loss and you need to reset the position? Well, if you have an incremental encoder, you got to send that crane 40 feet back to hit home. So there's a lot of applications where that would be a hindrance to have to zero if there's ever a loss of position. Using an absolute encoder removes the need to zero. And it also allows you to, whenever you query, get an updated position, even if you missed a count, for safety. So it's a much more robust way to establish a position. Now, not only will an absolute encoder give you the position within a circle, zero degrees, 10 degrees, 270 degrees, It'll also give you the number of rotations if you select what's called a multi-turn encoder. So the two flavors of absolute encoders are single turn encoders. They give you a position within a circle. And then multi-turn encoders. They give you a position within a circle and the number of times you've gone around in a circle. That's pretty important. If we go back to my watch analogy, your watch is a multi-turn absolute encoder. Your hour hand tells you how many times the minute hand has gone around. That's all the hour hand is, is a turns counter. That's what multi-turn encoders are. Now, our multi-turn encoders are pretty special. And you may say, well, counting turns is counting turns. I mean, you're not going to count turns differently, right? If I went four times around, your encoder better say four, not five. Well, how it's accomplished is actually very important. There's three main ways to do it. There's the use of gears, which if you think, again, of watches, Swiss watches. A lot of encoders today, if you were to take a back cover off some of our competitors' encoders, they would have gear trains in the back, little plastic gears to establish, or sometimes metal gears, uh, but usually little plastic gears to establish how many turns you've counted. You can also use a battery backup system to establish how many turns by storing that count 
in memory. Or the third way, which is the newest way, is through a process called energy harvesting. And that's what our multi-turn encoders do to establish a multi-turn count. Well, now why do you care? Let me show you. Here we have a conveyor belt. And on this conveyor belt, I have an incremental encoder here, our incremental cube encoder. And hanging off the back is our 58 millimeter multi-turn encoder. I'm gonna start the conveyor belt. And as you can see here, this bottom display and this top display are in sync with each other. Maybe they're point off because the camera refresh rate or something, but they are in sync with each other. The top one here is the absolute encoder. The bottom one here is the incremental encoder. If I were to stop this conveyor and I were to turn the absolute encoder power off, so when I flick this switch here, there we go. I click our absolute power switch here. You can see I've got an error 01, which means my absolute encoder is no longer talking. I just cut the, the VCC uh, circuit right out of there. It's off. When I turn this absolute power back on, it goes right back to where it was. It didn't forget. We didn't go to zero. We went back. Well, that's great, Jared, but that just means your encoder stored its position. Yep, and all three methods can do that, whether you're using gears or batteries or energy harvesting. So why do we care? Well, this is why we care. If I turn this encoder on, so now that it's moving, our position is changing, and all of a sudden we're at the factory, and we have a power loss, and I turn off this absolute power, but I'm still moving. Now I have motion while I'm not powered, and I turn this back on, we have not lost our position. That means that this encoder was still counting turns even when it was not plugged in. Our encoders work in the box. If you turn it when you receive it in the box, it's counting. An encoder with a battery backup won't do that. The battery doesn't run the LEDs. It's not counting. All the battery is used for in a battery backup absolute encoder is storing the data, storing the position. It's not updating. So now you would have lost position if this was a battery backup. Now, if this encoder had gears in it that were mechanically turning to count turns, well, Jared, that would have still worked. You're absolutely right. It would have still worked, except that you can only have so many gears. Some of these encoders out there are pretty long. They start looking like soda cans, I call them. They're long because of all the gears in the back, and you're still limited to the number of turns. If you had an application where, let's say, a gantry, and you're traveling maybe 40, 50, 100 feet, or any application with a long distance, you might have a motor running a gearbox where you do five or 10,000 revolutions of that motor to get from one end to the other. Well, if you have gears, those gears typically in most of our competitors' products will roll over to zero after 1,024 or 2048 turns. So if you have more than 2048 turns, an encoder with gears very often, it's not gonna be able to count high enough. It's like having an old car with, a, with an odometer that rolls over at 100,000 miles. Well, cars nowadays need a little bit more than that. So do encoders. Our encoder rolls over at two to the 43rd power. All multi-turn counting is 43 bit. Now I did some math, I didn't run this by engineering, so maybe one of you can correct me afterwards and say, Jerry, you were totally wrong with that. But I looked it up this morning, it's 49,313,000 miles to Mars. And if we multiply that by 5,280 feet, we know how many feet it is to Mars. Now, 2 to the 43rd power divided by that many feet is 33, which means we can make 16.89 round trips to Mars if we put this size wheel, a one-foot circumference wheel, like we were lining a soccer or football field, we walk to Mars and back, you would get a unique position from Earth to Mars and back 16 times. Well, obviously, you probably don't need Planet going to Mars anytime soon, but it's customizable. Because we're not using gears, you can select the resolution you need. If you need 2 bits or 4 bits or 10 bits or 12 bits of multi-turn counting, you choose what you need. So keep your word length short. You'll always know with our product, no matter how far you need to run out with those multi-turn counts, you'll be able to do it with our product. So we offer a wide variety of absolute encoders. Uh, we offer standard packages, 36 millimeter, 58 millimeter, and standard two and a half inch, which is ubiquitous in the industry. We offer uh, shafted, through bore, and hollow bore models as well. We also offer a lot of protocols, most of your common ones. So if you want to put it on a bus, say a CAN bus, we offer CAN open. We also offer SSI. Maybe you want to put it on a network. We offer EtherCAT, and we also offer Profinet. When it comes to resolutions, our absolute encoders are magnetic. They don't use a glass disc. They use magnetic with a Hall effect setup. 
So we can get up to 16 bits, which is 65,536 unique points in each circle before you multiply that by two to the 43rd power. You can get incredible uh, resolution within a single turn of that encoder, and you can also get an incredible resolution for how the distance, the total travel you want that encoder to go. We offer these encoders with IP67 sealing, so maybe you have a food grade type application or a washdown application. These encoders are rugged, they can handle a lot of axial and radial load, and they're sealed uh, excellent for any kind of application that you're into. Another great thing about our encoders are data sheets. Whew, they're long. The average incremental data sheet's like two to three pages. Marketing's not going to like this one. Some of our absolute documents are 60 and 70 pages, as are most of our competitors, because they are very configurable devices. If you have a can open encoder, you have thousands of object values you can edit. You can really set this up to mimic a cam switch, to have specific points you want to turn on and off to make go-no-goes. The sky is the limit for how you configure these. But as we all know, the more complicated and configurable you make something, the more options you have to worry about. So one thing that sets encoder products is apart is we have engineers standing at the ready to help you. And they're based in Idaho, USA. You could call us, we're on Pacific time. You're not waiting to get a hold of somebody that's six or eight time zones away. You're not sending emails trying to explain a complicated question through email via text. You're gonna get us on the phone right here in the USA to talk with you whenever you're ready. So encoder products. We do a lot of different encoders, incremental and absolute. We're based in the USA, as they said, in Idaho. If you were to draw a map of Idaho, it looks something like this. We're way up here, right next to the Canadian border. It's the middle of nowhere. Why do you care? You care because we didn't have any help getting started. We're 50 years, 51 years young uh, uh, this year. We've been in business a long time, always in northern Idaho. And as we grew our business, there was no machine shops down the road. There was no marketing catalog houses, the printer brochures down the road. We did it all in-house. So now as we've grown into a world-class company, we still machine our hubs. We machine our shafts. We populate our PCBs. We print our own disks. We do it at EPC. That allows us, there are billions of ways to combine, to combine our part numbers, but it allows us to ship any of those combinations with incremental encoders in four to six days. If you call us and say, hey, Jared, you got this in stock? Nope, because we stock very little. We don't need to. We build to order and we do it in four to six days for incremental encoders and seven to 10 days for absolute encoders. We also, I'm one of four on the outside. We're a nimble company. We love custom applications. If you have a situation with a machine you're working on and you need some help, hey, Jared, I love what you got in the catalog, but I really wish you had this or that. We can do that. We have an engineering department that is dedicated to special applications and we thrive on helping OEMs get exactly what they need in a package. I'm one of four on the outside for the United States, but we sell through distribution. We sell through world-class distributors, whether you're in the United States or maybe you're outside the United States, there will be a distributor who is local to you, who is trained on our products. It can also help you, whether you're an end user or an OEM, can help you get the right product designed into your application. You're gonna get a follow-up email on this with uh, extras and more details and absolute encoders if you're so interested. Thank you very much for joining the show. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Pack Expo day.